Hey everybody, Rich here with PC Linux OS July 2011 release, the Minimi KDE version. Why Mini? Because it's only a 460 megabyte distribution. And that's pretty mini, but it's still pretty awesome. So anyway, let's dive into this. The best compliment I can give PC Linux OS is that when using it, I don't feel like I'm using a Linux. This is actually very well thought out well done it is easy for Linux anyway and I, I think it's great the first thing you notice is that it looks good I like this brushed aluminum wallpaper the task area uh, this panel down here is done so in such a way where it is informative but not ugly it is done right you'll notice right up front that you have two configuration icons right on the panel right out of the box if you go to configure your desktop this is laid out in a somewhat Windows 7 style with icons they are searchable very cool and you can get things that you want to get to for example if I want to install a font I type font click now you notice that these are grayed out and only the ones that apply to font are the ones that are left so application appearance that would be font and login screen that has a font and obviously the font installer that would be for fonts too so that's pretty simple let's quit out of that the control center requires a root password. Now uh, watch this notification area down here. After I click this, there should be a little yellow badge that shows up. There it is. Now before I get into this, let me explain this badge. The way that PC Linux OS does uh, root password for authentication just to get things done in the OS that requires administrator access is that it uses root authentication as being persistent, meaning once it's on, it stays on until you shut it off. Now this is very obvious by the fact that that badge will show up whenever root access is enabled. The way to turn it off is to simply click it and do forget authorization. That's all you have to do. This is actually convenient on all fronts because you don't have to keep on typing in the root password over and over again. And secondly, for you security minded people, it's easy to disable and I'll show how to disable that well actually you already know it's just forget authorization but I'll show that in a moment once I'm done in here the control center is actually nice it, it's not searchable which I don't like that's a minor complaint but still there's not too many categories so it's not that hard to get through things are where you would think they would be so for example with hardware you would expect configuring your video card to be there if I click on that you see the information and options you would want to see graphic card monitor resolution if you go to further options you have your global options graphic card options and this is something which is kinda nice that you don't see very often in distributions anymore or at least not in a very obvious place is that you can tell PC Linux OS to not load the GUI on startup what that means is that when you boot the system it will dump you at a terminal prompt and you have to actually get into the uh, GUI graphical environment manually there are some Linux users that really appreciate this because they don't want the GUI loaded on boot they need it sometimes but don't necessarily need to have it on boot and that's on or off by a simple checkbox and that's nice let's go back here for other things like network sharing for example uh, Windows shares connecting to Windows shares or sharing things out to other win uh, excuse me out to other Windows users on your network that's either accessing shares which is this is all Samba stuff so if I do a search servers I think I have one or two machines on my network that will show up here yep there they are and I can access shares on other Windows machines or I can share things out to other Windows machines from here if I go to add I can name the share comment hit the directory just hit open like if I want to share my downloads directory hit OK it will share that directory I can comment the name of the share it's easy and it shows sample users and other printers you could share and other you know how that works if you've ever done sharing out of Linux it's simple in PC Linux OS and there's other little things here like if you want to manage your partitions you would do it from here if you want to do your audit uh, security auditing that's also done from here if you want to do auto login you do it from here from boot and some people say that's a very horrible idea but some people do like to have automatic logins just for uh, simplicity's sake so if you wanted to, to configure that it would be done from there okay on to the other side here 
99% of Linux distributions do clocks completely wrong. PC Linux OS does it completely right. And I'm big on clocks and <laughs> desktop environment. I just am. I don't know why. I just am. Anyway, so you have by default uh, 12 hour, hour, minute, anti meridian, post meridian, the day of the week, or excuse me, yeah, the weekday, uh, the day of the month, and the month. It does not show the year, but that's okay because if you don't know what year you're in currently, I think there's something wrong with you. But if you want to see the year, just click and it shows the calendar, July 2011. There it is. Click it again and the calendar goes away. If the calendar is enabled, it will stay there. If I click outside here, notice that it stays there until I click this again. You can do this though. Hit this little thing right here and get the calendar itty bitty and then bring it back for easy access. So if you want that whatever, you can just do it that way. Another really nice part about this is that in the date and time settings is that you can actually select your time zone. Now, you may be thinking, okay, why is that such a big deal? Well, there are some Linux distributions where it, it is just exceedingly difficult to change your time zone if you had to, or just to choose a different one. Sometimes you have to do it, and in the KDE environment, it's a, in PC Linux OS anyway, it's easy. Just go to the time zone tab and select the zone, and you're done. I like it. Now, as far as these notification icons are concerned, they are, I rate this as OK. Uh, first of all, let's do this one first, where I was said I was going to show you that. Just forget authorization, and it's gone. OK, anyway, so this one, I didn't know what it did. So I hit this, and it's a device notifier. No device is available. I'm assuming this would be for something like, say, uh, and, and it, it goes away after that, and that's OK. But I'm assuming it would be for something like, uh, USB sticks or things like that or whatever. Like it changes into this afterwards, which is okay, but I'm saying okay, and, and that's a USB symbol I believe, but I'm saying okay, why is it doing that? That's kind of odd. That's a weird one. This one, easy to figure out, sound. If you hover over it, it tells you your current volume, you click on it, it shows you the master volume, you hit the mixer icon, you got your other stuff easy to figure out. This one is the KDE Clipper tool which is for uh, clipboard contents. Kinda nice. Um, I do like that it's there. I don't know if I'd ever use it though. Now this one is the absolute wrong icon for what it is. When I first saw this green check mark I thought it was for an update manager. It is not. It's actually for a network center. So if I click on it, it brings up the network center. This really should be changed to something different. It should be I don't know, something to signify a network, like a little picture of a server or a, I don't know, a fork icon or whatever it is. That should be changed, but otherwise it's okay. The last one here is the uh, information icon. It's grayed out because it says there are no active jobs or notifications, so therefore it is grayed out. If you had an active job or a notification, it would be a different color, informing you that there would be something there that you should read. <laughs> All right, anyway. So as far as the rest of the icons here, you do your Synaptic Package Manager is here, which I'll cover in a moment, and then your File Manager over here. Now uh, the File Manager icon I think should really be changed because you expect File Manager icons to be yellow, like a Manila folder, and it's blue, and uh, it's a little nitpick on my part. Whatever. This one right here is actually for Desktop One and Desktop Two. So and you can um, I don't know. Can you configure more? Let's try pager settings. Number of rows to virtual desktops. There we go. Yep, number of desktops. So if I want four, I hit OK, and there's four instead of two. OK, so if you want more virtual desktops, that's the way to do it there. OK, now the next, before I uh, touch on the Synaptic Package Manager, let's look at widgets. Now there's this little icon up here, which I have no idea what it is, so I'm going to call it a prawn, because it looks like a prawn to me. And you go to add widgets. Now by default you have all of them, and they are scrollable with this horizontal bar, but it's easier just to go to categories and put something in there. For example, if I put in something from, oh, I don't know, system information, that's a good one. And let's see what we got here. Oh, System Monitor, that's a good one. You just click and drag it right on the desktop. This one's kind of, actually, yeah, I remember using this. Uh, this one's kind of nice because it just has all these different things that you can enable or disable at whim. 
So for example, this one does CPU monitor, your hard disk status, your hardware info, network monitor, memory status, and hardware temperature. So I will enable the hard disk status, and this is uh, configurable where you can say what partition, where, how, how often should it update, and so on. And then you have, uh, let's do memory status. And then if I hit the little wrench icon there, it will say what type of RAM uh, should I monitor, and so on. For whatever ones have options, will show up here. If you have one that does not have any options, such as uh, system information, like their system information there, it doesn't have any options because it's just an information screen, that's all it is. So anyway, let me just kill that one. And you know there are other there are tons of widgets in here you could choose from. There's also get new widgets, so you can and they're called plasma widgets, and there's a whole ton of them. Widgets in KDE are essentially just as good as they would be in Mac OS 10 or Windows 7. If you've seen widgets on one OS, you've seen them in them all pretty much. They're okay. It runs very very nicely in PC Linux OS, and it doesn't get in the way. So use them if you want. Uh, the last thing I'll touch here is the Synaptic Package Manager. This is the way to install and uninstall stuff in PC Linux OS. Some people don't like this. I personally think it's great because to me it just makes sense. Now I installed uh, what did I install here? The Chromium and Firefox because it didn't come with it. And I also installed a whole bunch of LibreOffice stuff in here as well. The way to install things is uh, the easiest way I've I've found is just to simply search for it. So if I do a search, and I search for say Firefox, I do a search for that, and it shows up. Now this green, see the green box, because I already have it installed. And I'll actually show the uninstall procedure here, and then the reinstall procedure. So I'll write now the way to install and uninstall stuff is to highlight it first and go to package or right click. I do the right click method because it's just faster for me. And I'll do mark for complete removal. Now there's an X in it. And I want to say, okay, do it. So apply. To be completely removed including configuration files, Firefox, apply. Okay. Do to do, and you'll see it updating its index here. And once the list comes back, it should be completely uninstalled. Internet, oops. Yep, it is uninstalled. It is gone. And if I wanted to put it back, I'll do a search again for Firefox. There's Firefox. Right click, mark for installation. The icon changes. Hit apply to be installed. Firefox. Do it. It will go and download the latest Firefox. Now, while it's doing that, actually, I will show uh, Chromium here, which happens to be 12, I think. Yeah, this is Chromium 12. Still, it's current enough. It's good enough. I did have to install the Flash plugin, but once I did, things operate pretty darn smoothly. I was actually really happy with the way this runs. The uh, it was smooth. The fonts are proper. Everything works great. All right, this. Come on, finish up. Mozilla Firefox browser. Wait for the list to come back. See a little bar here. It is indexing. And... Okay, so it should be in the menu now. Oh, try it again. Yep, Firefox. And we'll see if the Flash Player carried over even with an uninstall and reinstall. It did. Cool. And I might as well show this too. The way to do a Flash plugin from Synaptic in PC Linux OS is, uh, I think I searched for Adobe. That was the way I had it done. And I had to scroll down. There it is. Yeah, Flash Flash dash player dash plugin. But I just searched for Adobe and I was able to find it easier that way. And I installed it. And it says um, Adobe Flash Player for all web browsers, including Opera. So if you happen to put, I will search for Opera. Do, 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 do. Package. Oh, I don't have. Let's try Opera Browser. 
Oh wait, I'm doing this wrong. Just name. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Upper browser. 11.5. Mark for install. Apply. Apply. Anyway, that is a basic overview of how to get things done in PC Linux OS. I find it easy to use, easy to get around. I can manage my files easily. I showed you the clock, I showed you how to do other things. Getting things like Flash and whatever was not a problem. There's a ton of apps for it from the Synaptic Package Manager. It is very fast. It is uh, very slim, which is also good. I think you would really like this. If you want something uh, different, it's not, I wouldn't say it's for power users, but I would say that if you just want something that uh, gives you the least, one of the distributions that gives you the least hassle, you just want to get up and running real quick. And in a way, that just looks nice. PC Linux OS, check it out. Awesome.